Welcome to the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. This season is all about comfort. With many French comfort recipes made in my own home kitchen, inspired by what I find in my garden, and kept company by my two furry companions, Join me as I share seasonal fare to elevate the everyday meal. And most importantly, discover how to enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Let's get started. Welcome to the third season of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. I'm really excited to kick off this new season. Um, What we're going to be focused on for this uh, duration of eight episodes are comfort meals, um, specifically French-inspired comfort meals um, or dishes, some desserts, some uh, main entrees, um, some just nibbles. Um, Yes, nibbles are good. (laughs) And... um, Also, what I'd like to do this year or this season is at the end of every episode, much like the podcast, The Simple Sophisticate, is share with you um, an everyday luxury at the end. Now, that everyday luxury could be something that I use in the kitchen that simplifies the cooking process or the time or the way that I function in the kitchen, or it could also just simply be something that I enjoy in my home um, that helps me relax in my house, brings a calm or a peace um, Mm -hmm. to the everyday, thus an everyday luxury. Mm -hmm. So look for that at the end of today's episode. And um, Norman and I are going to get started cooking today's um, entree. I think you'll you'll enjoy it. It's going to take me back to France and um, it's also going to take us out into the garden. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Shannon Abels and this is a Simply Luxurious Kitchen. And this is Oscar and Norman's over here and they are my two sous sous chefs that will join me from time to time. This is the first episode of season three, and I'm so excited to welcome you into my new space. Today, we're gonna cook one of my favorites that I was introduced to when I went and had the opportunity to cook with Susan Herman Loomis in um, Louvier uh, last summer. And I've adapted it to fit what's available in our markets here, but I also learned something that I have now added to my herb garden that I think you might want to do as well. We're gonna make sorrel chicken with cream and wine sauce. Now before I started cooking today, I went out, I wanted, I always like having some kind of fresh mother nature, something that is alive in my kitchen besides us three. And so I went out and trimmed some salvia and uh, that is gonna be here in the kitchen. There's something about that that I just, I love having that softness. So let's get started. The stove is already going. We're gonna start browning some bacon and uh, let's start making this recipe. So simple, so delicious. Here we go. All right, so we have the pan at a medium to high heat. We're gonna add some bacon. I'm actually gonna add some pancetta. Um, It's about four ounces of pancetta. If you have really lean bacon, or you just want a little more extra fat in there, add some olive oil, but then add the bacon. We're gonna brown that and render all that lovely fat. I'm just gonna scrape all of the bacon out and put it on a plate. You can use a slotted spoon, whatever you have. You wanna get all of the bacon out so it doesn't smoke. And just, (laughs) 
I'll turn it off just for safety's sake. Okay. But all of the bacon comes out. And you're going to leave about two tablespoons of grease in the in the pan because that's what's going to be uh, to help leave the chicken in there so it doesn't stick. There we go, perfect. And put this back to medium heat. Okay, so it's a medium heat. We're now going to put the chicken in. Now, before we put the chicken in. Oops, there's some bacon on the floor there, Audubay. So we're gonna season the chicken, salt and pepper on one side, and then you'll season the other side once it's in the pan. So I'm seasoning the non-skin side. What we have here, speaking of the chicken, we have thighs, bone-in, skin-on, chicken thighs. And this, this originally was a recipe for rabbit, um, but for me, for where we're at, um, cooking chicken is much more. Feasible, and uh, the, the skin and the bone just add to the flavor. Woo! I get those in there. I just split out of my hand. Put that back over. And then all on the. There you go. Non-skin side. Now I'm going to season the side I haven't seasoned yet. Salt and pepper, bird of soul. And you're just browning them. So about five minutes on each side, medium heat. And then you'll flip them over and do five minutes on the other side. Um, you're not cooking them through, you're just browning them. So do let them just sit there and get really happy in the pan. And then we'll flip them over and do it again. All right, let's flip these. They're seasoned already. Oh, look at that. Yeah, we flip them right over. That sizzling everything. Nice and brown. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that one. Woohoo! <laughs> Five more minutes. Is it done as far as browning? So we're just gonna remove it from the pan. Woo! We're gonna set it aside while we reduce the onions down. So we're gonna set this aside. Tent it while it's over here. It's okay if it's not tented, but, you're, but it'd be helpful just to, if you like. So now, the onions. So I have an entire onion right in the pan. Don't do anything else except for add the onions. So a full onion. You can do even two small onions or one large onion. Medium heat, we're going to add some salt, and this will render down in about six to eight minutes. So just kind of break them out, make sure they're all against the bottom, and then you don't have to play with them anymore. Just wait eight minutes, let them cook down, and then we'll start making the base for the sauce. This is the aromatic part. Love this. Now, what I really like about this dish is I often serve it for family or company or friends who stop by that I haven't seen in a while. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time to make, um, but it's full of flavor. Um, uh, we're gonna go out in the garden here in a second, but it has flavors that are known and loved, but an element to it that maybe they had known about. And so it is something special, but this is definitely a weeknight meal as much as it is a dinner party meal. So, sorrel and chicken with cream and wine sauce. Now we're gonna add a cup of wine, white wine, dry white wine. Okay. And you're just gonna bring this to boil eventually. But before you bring it to boil, just get all the good stuff scraped off the bottom. <laughs> Once you get all of the extra renderings off the bottom of the pan, you're gonna put that chicken right back in. Put the chicken right back in. There we go. Bring it to boil. And you're also gonna add two bay leaves to the sauce. We're gonna have the simmer. We're gonna add the bacon. All that lovely bacon. We're gonna cover it. It's all 
all that's in there. We're gonna cover it and let it sit for 20 minutes. I'm gonna put my timer on 20 minutes. I like to check it at 15. And in total, it will be simmering for 20 minutes, but I like to check it at 15. So let's leave it just like that. Bacon's in there, bay leaves, wine, the chicken's back in there with the onions. And when we come back, we're gonna start making the lovely sauce. Now I'm gonna go out in the garden and cut some sorrel. Sorrel is that herb that I have never had in my kitchen until I went to France and Sir Susan Herman Loomis had it out in her garden, her potager. And when she put it to the sauce, in this sauce, it was as though you tasted lemons. There was not a stitch of lemon in there at all. It was just the sorrel. Let me show you what a leaf looks like. So the leaves are big and long and oblong. And I grew these from seed um, because I couldn't find them in the nurseries. I did find them in the grocery store once, but it was a very rare occasion. Um, so you can grow these from seed. So for a couple dollars a packet, um, they're very simple to do that. They take some time to grow and they can be perennials in the garden. Um, what I learned this summer after I put them on the south side of my house in bright sunlight is that they actually like a little bit more shade, not north side of your house or anything, but if they would maybe just get the western, excuse me, if they would just get the eastern sun um, and maybe a little bit of shade in the evening, afternoon, they would maybe be a little happier. These plants can get really, really tall. I mean, three, four feet, five feet tall, uh, and they can make it through the winter. So this is the first summer I've had them. I'm excited to see if the plant makes it through a bend winter. Um, I'm gonna plant some seeds or sow some seeds in the spring just in case. Um, but they are a lovely lemon flavor for fish dishes, chicken dishes, um, as we had it with our rabbit dishes. It just is a deeper citrusy, lemony flavor. And that's what we're gonna add to the sauce, sorrel. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is sorrel. So we're just gonna go in and clip these and get a bunch of them. So there we go. All of these love. Oh, look at these lovely big leaves. Look at that. Look at that lovely big leaf. This is sorrel. It has a lovely lemon flavor. And it can grow. It can grow. I mean, this is just from seed that I grew. It can grow really, really tall. And it can be a perennial herb. So I'm going to keep growing it here and see how it fares during the winter. And uh, oh my gosh, this is looking so good. Look at that, look at that. We want four cups, four cups of leaves. And uh, this recipe is gonna take about nearly all of mine. Ooh, love these. in there. So we got about four cups, maybe just two, but that's a lot. So we'll go put that in the sauce. That's going to make it extra yummy. All right. So the chicken is done. Woo! And what we're going to do is remove the chicken and put it on the serving platter. Get all this good stuff off. Oh yeah, oh, it's definitely cooked through. We're gonna put it on our serving platter. Skin side up. Here we are. Oh wow. There we go. Okay, a little more brown than I wanted, but uh, it's still gonna be good. I'm not gonna toss this puppy. Now, put it back on the stove and the sauce is going to be reduced down so it thickens up. So what we wanna do is just sit here and we'll see it thicken up a little bit more before we add the cream and the sorrel. Um, so keep it on medium to medium high. You can remove the bay leaves. Oop. there we go. And just reduce that liquid down 
two, about two thirds remain until about two thirds of what was there when you took the chicken out remain. It'll start to thicken up and that's what you want. Perfect. All right, so my sauce is about done. So I'm gonna turn this way down, down to low. And I'm gonna add a cup of creme fraiche. Now, if you don't have creme fraiche, oh, good cup. You can put heavy cream in here. I found that it's a bit thicker um, when you put creme fraiche in. Once you put the cream in, you're gonna notice the simmering slows down because it's cooled it down. So you need to heat that cream back up. Oh, this looks so yummy. It smells really good in here too. That's why Oscar's right here. <laughs> and once the cream is kind of melted into the sauce, then we will add the sorrel. Oh, that looks so good. Now it's time for the sorrel. So I'm gonna grab my four cups or as much sorrel as you can get. Chopped up. Oh, yeah. We're gonna stir it up and then we're gonna let it cook into the sauce for about three or four minutes. And then we'll put the chicken back in, warm it back up, and then we'll be ready to go. So you're gonna get it all incorporated and it's actually going to turn the sauce a little bit of a olive green color and that's perfectly fine. That means it's sharing its goodness. So let's let that cook for a couple more minutes. All right, while that cooks, oh, it's simmering. This is on a light simmer and the bubbles, oof. That smell, so good. So you'll see here how the leaves now look a dark olive green. They started to blend into the sauce. This is what you want. This is what you want. You're doing it right. Now say you don't have sorrel. So all of last year before my sorrel grew, before I planted it, um, I use lemon and lemon zest. So lemon juice and lemon zest would absolutely work here. Um, you wouldn't have to be cooking it as long as I am now once you put that sorrel in. You would just put the lemon zest, the lemon juice, mix it up, and then you just put the chicken in and heat the chicken up and it'd be done. So that's the only editing part you would do. It actually save you more time. But I will say the depth of citrus flavor is much more with the sorrel. So if you can get your hands on that or if you can grow your own, I highly recommend it. It's very inexpensive to grow your own um, from seed. You'll have some French herbs in your potage. Okay, now I'm gonna put the chicken back in and the juices that have released themselves on this pan while it's been resting. Okay. There's some juices here I wanna get back in. There we are, perfect. I'm gonna keep this because it is gonna be my serving dish. Get rid of that for a second. And you wanna take the sauce and just spoon it on top of the chicken so that it's getting everywhere around it and on top of it, warming it up, but also giving it some flavor. There we are. Just cover it up. Yeah. And you're just gonna heat that up for about five more minutes. Now to turn this into a whole meal, um, what I've done in the past is while the chicken is simmering on the stove with the lid on for those 20 minutes, I'm roasting my vegetables or making whatever vegetable side dish I wanna pair with it. I'm also at this point gonna be boiling some water um, and making some pasta because this sauce is fantastic on top of uh, pasta. And it's just a good pairing. You have your vegetables, you have your protein with your chicken with that fantastic sauce, and you have a little bit of carbs. So that would be a complete dish. Um, this is definitely the piece de resistance. This is the wow. This is the yum. And everything else will complement that. All right, so we're done. And let's dish up. All right, so let's grab our chicken. Serving dish has been cleaned up a bit. Perfect the chicken on the serving dish. And uh, if you wanted to put your pasta underneath or your rice or whatever you're serving it with, you could do that first. There we go. Yum. Now you want that sauce. You want all of that sauce all 
over that chicken. And then your guests or whoever's serving can give them as much or as little as, as they desire. Oh, look at that steam. It just smells so good right here. This, this is like not even a, just a facial, it's a <laughs> food facial. Oh my gosh. Yum. And that bacon, there's that flavor of that bacon and that fatty saltiness. Mm. Okay. Wonderful. Let's have a bite. Okay. Mm. Oh. So tender there. I love keeping the skin on because it just adds more texture and flavor. Get a little onions on there. Get some bacon. Mm. Mm. That citrus flavor is right there. There's something just more than a um, lemon. Mm -hmm. So good. And crunch of the bacon. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, sorrel chicken with cream and wine sauce, full of unique flavor that's still something that people recognize. It's that citrusy, refreshing bite, as well as the comfort of chicken and a good sauce. Enjoy your food, enjoy your day, and enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Bon journée. So the everyday luxury I'd like to share with you today is actually a show that takes us into the garden. And um, a handful of my listeners and readers introduced me to this program that's been going on for 52 seasons, so 52 years. And it airs on the BBC and um, it comes on every Friday beginning in March and it runs through October. And it's called Gardener's World. And um, Monty Don hosts this show, but Adam Frost has also been hosting it um, when Monty travels or is gone. This year he's not traveling, um, but he steps away and Adam Frost takes over. And I love him just as much as I love Monty Don. They're both uniquely fantastic gardeners who are sincerely passionate about what they do, um, as well as passionate about their animals, which I have a fondness for as well, yes. Um, anyway, so th that has been my everyday luxury. Um, I enjoy it once a week. Um, and it's about an hour program and you learn so many different things in all different types of gardens, large and small, urban and rural. Um, and it takes you throughout the season, which is what I love right now because I'm learning so much um, and I have so much to learn. But it's been fun being a student. Um, and since today's episode took us out into the garden, into the potage, into the herb garden, um, I wanted to share that with you because it was Monty Don that taught me about a better placement to place my sorrel. Um, so it's on Amazon Prime if you are um, here in the States and it becomes available almost immediately Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Sometimes there's a delay, but um, I tend to watch it Saturday mornings with a cup of tea and the boys and I snuggle up. Um, Oscar's taking a nap right now. Um, and I get my gardening notebook out and I take notes about plants I wanna explore, um, tips on how to better take care of my plants, um, gardens to tour, because they take you to different gardens. They tour actual gardens, not just homeowners gardens, but actual gardens where people go and visit throughout the UK, which is so much fun, especially since we're not traveling as much right now. So I highly recommend that. Gardener's World um, on BBC, Friday nights, March through October. Here's to bringing in some everyday, something special to look forward to. And I think that's what everyday luxuries are about. Something to look forward to, to elevate the everyday. Mm -hmm.